Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Rahim. Uh, so let's uh, welcome back and we're going to start doing. So in last video, we actually, in my last video, we actually uh, look at the derivation of Fourier transform. In this video, we're going to look at some of the examples. The first and the most basic example that we're going to look at for Fourier transform is actually called a delta pulse or a delta function. So what that delta function is, is basically, so let's, let's look at a couple of properties of this. So x of t is some function. And that function, we're calling it a delta t function. And we're calling it a delta function. Delta pulse or delta function. All right. There are certain properties of this particular signal. And the property, the first property of this signal is something like this. Delta t exists. This function actually exists. It's actually plus positive infinity at t is equals to 0 and 0 at t anything greater than 0. So basically what am I saying is this. So this is it's, it's actually not a real function then. It's just some made up function but that will help us determine a Fourier transform of something that we might be needing it in future. It's a very good function. Okay. Uh, what that function is saying is this, at t is equals to 0, this is positive infinity. Anything other than that, this function doesn't exist, right? So, so to help you understand what am I saying, I'm going to draw me a picture. Let's say I have a picture like this. And, and let's say I have this small pulse, and this thing has an area of 1, all right? this thing has an area of one how can i make a function that exists only at t is equals to zero which means it's a very 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 thin line that only exists when t is equals to zero so in reality we cannot make that function but mathematically we can do that right so i'm going to come back to this picture and 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 by mathematically you can write this as this so this function only exists at zero for the sake of simplicity we're going to write from negative zero to positive zeros this is just some made up uh, uh what do you call it um, integration limits because this function only exists at zero so i gotta give some limits so at zero is just going it's a very high function so at this delta t dt according to this definition i should get one all right. These this, these are the two characteristics of this function. Okay. Let's come back to this. What am I saying? Why delta t dt? The integration of this is one when a function that only exists at zero. Okay. Let's take this function. All right. And what is the area under the curve of this right now? If I were to ask you, this is just one. All right. Now I'll do this. I'll cut this thing in half, and that and I'm going to double the length of this. So basically, I am putting this length on top of it. What is the area under the curve of this guy? Okay, the area under the curve for this is still going to be 1. I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to cut this thing in half and I'm going to put that on top of it. I'm going to double that and then I'm going to keep doing it. The area under the curve is not changing. So you do it so many times that this function is becoming so thin, 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 thin. And, 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 and theoretically, this function only exists at t is equals to 0. What that, this is what it means. All right. So a delta function, I'll explain a couple more things about this particular function, is actually the, the, the Fourier transform or, or the integration for this is going to be 1. All right. So let's try to integrate this function. All right. So let's try to find out the Fourier transform. So the Fourier transform of your delta t, what is this? All right. I'm going to apply the definition of Fourier transform, uh, which we have learned. Um, the, the definition of Fourier transform is actually, so Fourier transform definition is going from negative infinity to positive infinity, x of t e to the j 2 pi f of t dt. This is the definition of my Fourier transform. So I'm going to apply this here. So I'm going to take a Fourier transform of this delta function. Now, the integration limits for this guy, uh, we're going to go 
we're going to write it as t as it goes from negative infinity to positive infinity delta t e to the negative j 2 pi f of t dt all right so far so good so i'm going to simply plug in my function now the the integration limit this function only exists at zero there is no such thing as negative zero but just just to check and see i mean i mean we're going to use negative zero to positive zero because it just only exists on those two only at zero so negative zero to positive zero it's not going to change much delta t e to the j 2 pi f of t dt all right now here's what i'm going to do when i solve for this i'm going to treat this i'm going to take this out i'm going to treat this as a a constant value why am i going to treat this as a constant value okay in place of t if i were to put zero what that whole thing would become it's just going to be some number isn't it the integration limits that i have are from zero to zero or in case it would be any value this whole thing would become just some number so that's why i'm going to treat that as a constant i'm going to bring that thing out so this is going to be e j 2 pi f of t now t as it goes from negative uh, uh from zero minus to positive zero delta t dt what is this value going to be now so what is delta t integration if i were to take this signal and if i were to integrate this just like intuitively we looked at this particular exam what is the area under the curve of this area under the curve for this guy is just going to be one so so the fourier transform for delta t is just one i hope you're understanding this all right and i want to say a few more things about this function this is a very important function and so if this is a fourier transform of this what is the inverse fourier transform of this of course the inverse fourier transform of one is going to be your delta function all right so what is it that i'm saying all right so let me draw this in time domain let's look at it in terms of time domain and frequency domain what is it that i'm trying to say all right so this function only exists and this is a function which is an ongoing function that only exists at this particular value all right and it's a very sharp function isn't it it has a very sharp transition at t is equals to zero it's just shooting up this is what my delta function is now what so this is what my delta function is in time domain now when i look at it in terms of frequency domain this function looks something like this if i were to plot this function this thing is uniform all right this function exists in my frequency domain so this was in time domain uh, it's just one what that Fourier transform one means that this thing contains it's 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 a function that contains a lot of frequencies it has a very wide spectrum why it has a very wide spectrum the reason it has a wide wide spectrum because the transition the transition the faster this transition is because the transition is at is as it goes to zero it's just going all the way up to infinity the transition is very fast based on this transition with fast this will have a lot of frequency component that's why it's throughout that frequency scale this is just going to be one so it's actually spreading out on your signal in frequency domain so that's the that's the idea um this is very important application in distance signal processing you probably have seen those movie clappers where the guy just goes in and claps it like this that actually generates a fast pulse like this this will help them edit the videos and things like that even though this function doesn't exist uh you cannot have a function that exists at t is equal to zero in reality but we use we made up this function to actually do a lot of carry out a lot of signal processing tasks so if you have any questions uh, leave it in a comment section and don't forget to subscribe to my channel